Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Erin and today we're going to be continuing Disco Elysium. Is that what my intro normally sounds like? So if I do this a lot, <laughs> it's because I have fake nails on. These ones had little strawberries on them and I honestly couldn't resist. So I bought them and you can't even see the strawberries, but that's okay. I had to trim them myself. These were really long. I've never gotten my nails done professionally and I honestly don't know if I ever could because they were so long I couldn't use my phone. Girls, girls with long nails, if you're watching this, please, how do you use your phone? I just, I trim them enough where I can just use my phone because if not, I would have had to take them off. Anyways, so, so as I mentioned in the previous video, the devs actually sent me an early access code for this game so that's how I was able to check it out. And so far, I'm really, really enjoying it. I put it in my new series on the channel called First Look, and that's basically where I take a look into a game and see if I like it, see how I feel about it, if you guys want to see me continue it, and then I go from there because I wasn't sure how I'd like it. But I got a lot of positive feedback on that video. Everyone seemed to enjoy it. A lot of people wanted me to continue it, and I'm very happy about that because I wanted to continue it. If I wasn't going to continue it on the channel, I was definitely going to play it on my off time because this game is very, very cool so far. It has a lot of different things that come together and make it so cool. I'll try to summarize things as best I can, but keep in mind that I am bad at this. <laughs> you think I'd get better at this part of the video. I I've been doing it for a while now, but no. So basically you're playing as this detective and you wake up in a hostel room and you have no memory of how you got there or who you are. This whole game is this detective RPG. Ask people questions, figure out who you are, how you got there, etc. It was a bit of a slow start and I wasn't sure how to feel, but once we got downstairs into the lobby area of the hostel, we met Kim Kitsuragi? <laughs> Kim something. Forgot how you say his name. But as it turns out, he's a lieutenant from another police precinct and he was sent over to work with you, the detective. Apparently someone was murdered near the hostel. I don't know if it's a hotel or a hostel or what the difference is really. But anyways, like I said, Kim was sent over to work with us, so he's kind of joining our little group and we run around with him and just sort of look at all these details in the world and it's, the art is so beautiful and the music's really good. One thing that really surprised me was how funny the dialogue was. I didn't know what to expect, but it really made me laugh out loud quite a few times of how like smart it was. If you can't tell already, I really, really enjoyed this game. And again, I'm very thankful to the devs who sent it out. You guys are amazing. Thank you for letting me play this game. I think in this episode, we're gonna finally look at the body and see what really happened, find out clues and stuff like that. I don't know, I'm just really excited. So let's not waste more time and let's get back into Disco Elysium. Okay, we're back. Hello, hello. Oh, okay. Pretty sure so, yeah, that's how you zoom in. Okay, someone said you could zoom in like that. Oh, cool. Okay. Hey, Kim, what's up? Oh, oh, it stays zoomed out. You zoom out. Oh, oh. Okay. So you zoom out all the way here. Let's zoom in pretty close. I think that's good. Yeah. Music is kind of loud. <laughs> I do love the music, but I'm just gonna turn it down a little bit. Alright, so we're supposed to be finding a body. That's pretty sure it's like through there, but I want to look around a little bit. What's this? An old call box with a matrix of push oh, buttons okay. lists all the companies in the East Delta Commerce Center. That is a lot. Uh, electronic doorbell. An old call box. Huh. Does it even work anymore? It looks pretty old. Um, the alternative title for this game series is Aaron mispronounces every French word there is. <laughs> okay, main hall, building A, Andro Orlando, hair, S, C, A, yada, yada, yada. What is main hall building A? key melody starts playing after you ring the doorbell. Then... Kuno, oh, I didn't mean stop to... calling here. Grown-ups don't have time for your stupid games. I didn't mean to cut him off. Uh... 
Who's Kuno? This is the police. Please open the door. Sorry, I was just trying random doorbells. I didn't have anything important. <laughs> I mean, that one's more accurate. Um, sorry, I was just trying random doorbells. Please don't do that. Doorbells are not toys, and this one isn't even working properly. Please don't call us again. Thank you. A single beep indicates that the line has gone dead. <laughs> Can I just call everyone? You ring the doorbell, but no one answers. Damn. What an ominous name for a hair salon. Doesn't bode well for anyone's hair. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, don't know how to say that. Boxing for young athletes in gym. All you hear is static, but no one answers the call. I'm just going to go through all these. 20, 24H window. You ring the doorbell, but nothing Damn happens. you. Emma's fashion... Atelier. You wait for a minute or two, but all you get from the call box is silence. I'm no sad. One answers the call. If I mess up the gameplay in this episode, I'm blaming my fake nails. If everyone's taxi, the rest has been burned off. Looks like someone has melted half the plastic off with a lighter. The doorbell doesn't work anymore. Kim is just standing there like, come on, dude. <laughs> Can we hurry this up already? Slipstream SCA. You hear static from the intercom speaker. It sounds as if someone has picked up the receiver, but isn't saying anything. Hello? Is anyone there? Yes, hello. This is Tricentennial Electric. This is a woman's voice crackling and fragile through the static. Have you come to place an order? She sounds almost antique, as if her voice was being played off an old wax cylinder. A receiver must not be working properly. Hold on. Try Centennial Electrics? I thought I was calling Slipstream S SCA. Yes, hello. Can you let me inside the building, please? Lie. Yes, I've come to place an order. Or, sorry, I don't have any business here. Um, I thought I was calling Slipstream SCA. My god. The lieutenant exchanges a look with you. Sorry? It's you. My god, I didn't think I would hear your voice again. Am I starting a side quest? No, something's wrong here. Are you sure she's talking to you? Do we know each other? Who are you? Where are you? <clears throat> Stand up straighter. Yeah, it's me. Here I am again, crawling back into your life. Uh, do we know each other? Michelle, just please... Oh, she stops and you can hear her breathe heavily. Her voice is just Why did you Ugh. even call? I don't understand. You've been gone for months. I thought you didn't care. Michelle. <laughs> is that his name? Hold on. Tell me what's going on. What did I do? Of course I care. It's just I've been going through some tough times. <laughs> Ever since I came to work here, it's been different. As if my mind's been wiped clean. Hold on. Do other people... Are other people dealing with the same thing I'm the dealing with? The spot of static overrides her words. When she speaks again, it sounds like she's submerged. It's so nice. It's so nice to be able to finally forget. Forget about what? She sounds like she's about to cry. Hello? Oh god, please don't cry. Hang up the call. Hello? She doesn't answer. You said it was nice. What's so nice about forgetting? Are you still there? You said it was nice. Silence. The only thing you can hear now is static and waves washing ashore on the bay. What just happened? I get it. You don't want to talk to me. No one ever wants to talk to me. <laughs> Fuck. Hang up the call. All right. It's a goodbye then. Hang up the call. You press the number sign on the keypad that terminates the call. Twelve name cards on the call box read... Volition? Huh. Okay, I'm not gonna try that. I don't know. Fortress Accident SCA. That was really weird. Silence. No one's home. Damn you. Fortress Accident. Silence. No one answers the doorbell. 
Main hall, building B, we're on Nothing defense. happens after you ring the doorbell. They don't want to talk to you. Okay, fine. <laughs> no one ever wants to talk to me. East Delta Pinball, entrance from building B. Silence. No one answers your call. Empty card? This button looks new, but someone has removed the name card. Nothing happens when you try to ring it. Huh. This button looks new. It's probably not connected yet. He takes a step back, inspecting the other names on the list. Okay. Well, that was really odd. Um, does she actually know me? Or... Is she mistaking me for someone else? That was really weird. Rudisa... Rudisaint? No, oh, no, I can't pronounce anything! Something. It was something. <laughs> Trash can! There are bottles inside. You can pick them up if you had a bag. Why would I want to do that? Oh, there's a little girl over there. This Postla Vantorie mail collection box has been heavily vandalized with graffito. A closer inspection graffito. reveals two bullet holes in the front. <laughs> Good mail delivery box. Pat the box. Fuck you, mail delivery box. <laughs> Kick it. Let's just pat the nice delivery box, please. I'm gonna pat the box. <laughs> the box seems happy. Oh my god. That's, that's amazing. Each shit pig fucked by the coon and sent G with a crown have been scribbled on it. Jenny is a whore and best set <laughs> mailbox also. What does best set mean? My French people out there, you tell me what I just said. Did I just curse someone? I feel you, mail collection box. Mail collection box, you should pan the fuck up. <laughs> oh my god. My nose is so stuffed up. That's okay. I feel you, mail collection box. The mail collection box seems cathartic. Thankful even. So do you. You shudder. Then you swallow. Good mail delivery box. <laughs> the box seems happy. <laughs> that was amazing. Kim is just like, oh fuck. <laughs> Where are we going? We just go wherever we want, huh? Why do I have to go all the way over here to read the sign? Pigs go home. The street name is illegible. Hi. Who are you? I am a gander and a hunter and a gatherer. Feel like a traveler. The man mutters to himself, accenting the beats as he goes. A simple little cadence. He seems to be making it up as he goes. <laughs> Keep listening. I am the law. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> Keep listening. From another planet. Hey there. <laughs> What's going on here? It's a jam, my man. He motions toward the sprawl of lorries with a sweeping gesture. It's a traffic jam for the ages. Harbor gates of the street are shut tight. No explanation given. Workers on strike, scabs agitating, an all around cluster fuck. I feel that. Meanwhile, we're all stuck here in long haul limbo for days upon days upon days upon days. Limbo, huh? So that's where I am. So how long have you been here? Cool. <laughs> Leave. So how long have you been here? Feels near forever. Like I was born on this here roundabout and this was all I ever knew. Just me and the metal and the tires, the oil and the fumes of mazout. Extravagantly phrased, but I can roll with it. I don't quite understand what you just said. Could you say it again, only a little less plotting? <laughs> um, extravagantly phrased. Yeah, imagine. It's been a whole week already. <laughs> You've only been here a week. Behind the laugh, however, a touch of sorrow. Hmm. So tell me, what do you need? Care to spare some change for a working stiff? <laughs> Tell me more about this strike. Know anything about the dead man? The one hanging behind the hostel there? Point at the yard. What are you hauling anyway? Good for now. Good talk. Uh, tell me more about the strike. 
Okay. <laughs> Must be a glitch where sometimes they don't actually read the dialogue. It's like, whatever's going on over at the docks. Workers got a blockade set up, making advance. No way in or out. So what's the union demanding? Anything else I should know? Include, um, what's the union demanding? Why isn't he saying the dialogue? Some pretty wild stuff, I hear. Like a giant new power crane and half the company? I forget what exactly. Good on them, I guess. Dude, speak! <laughs> I've heard there's a company rep in town too, like a strike negotiator type. They know what's up. Precise demands and so on. Ah, yes, from the Wild Pines. We'll meet her soon enough, I'm sure. Oh. Uh, what else? What do you think the company wants? Dude, this guy's broken! You were speaking before! They want to keep that money flowing in, my man. He makes a ka ching sound. Anything else I should know? Anything else, he thinks? Yeah, this ain't really my area of expertise. I just do my job and get paid. I have things to do and places to be. All of us do. All of who? God, why is he not speaking? This is so frustrating. Us lorry drivers. Coming news. <laughs> if you still hang around here waiting for this mess to end, must have scurried off somewhere to get drunk or high or late. He smiles awkwardly. Not that I blame him, really. Not you? Not my thing, Jason. Transient pleasures is a drag these days. I prefer the examined life now, thinking, reflecting, observing. He glances down at the road towards the horizon, a glint of something in his eyes. He tries his best to look nonchalant, but there's a rigidity in him, as if trying to conceal something warm and deep beneath a cool exterior. Hmm. Empathy. Formidable. What do you see in his eyes? Let's say... Don't be a stranger, he gives you a salute with two fingers. Let's try to back away and maybe talk to him later when he can actually speak. You know? Hello again, my man. What's on your mind? Uh, let's try this one. In his eyes, oh. an our familiar longing. Flecks of brown and gold. Familiar how? It's hard to say. His gaze wanders southwest, down the street that goes beyond the horizon. What's in the southwest? Man, why are you broken? Excuse me? He emerges from the reverie. A flinch jolts his frame. Is that you saying? The question is touched. I really hope he speaks these next lines. I, I don't know how to fix it, guys. I'm sorry. Um, I'm a cop. I can fix anything. Really, you can tell me. Hell, I get longing. I felt something similar since I woke up. Uh... I get longing. Man, he sighs. I don't know what to say. Not much anyone can do. There's no helping in absence, you know? <sighs> Speak! <laughs> I miss my family. They're all I have. My wife, a second kid on the way, waiting all the way in Diora? And here I am, stuck in this shit, so far from home. Diora? What's it like to miss someone? Uh, Diora? Diora of the Seven Seas. It's on the other side of the Caillou. Caillou? Pretty much on the other side, called Laurentide, off mainland. We've got a little place there. I can almost hear my kids laugh when it snows. What's it like to miss someone? What's it like? Good. And bad. An ache that brings you joy. He smiles warmly. I think of them a lot. I dream up these silly scenarios in great detail, of living with them. It comforts me. There's a pause and a sigh. Then he turns his eye eyes to you. What about you, cop man? You missing someone? Is that what it is? This feeling? Well, didn't it say in the intro that I had an ex-wife? No. It's scarier than that. You're pursued by a hunter, smelling of apricots and sorrow, and the past. I'm fine, man. I don't miss anyone. I miss someone, but I don't know who it is, or no, I feel hunted. I miss someone, but I don't know who it is. I feel for you, my friend. It's bad enough to know who you miss. Missing like that doesn't feel like it has much of an upside. You gained experience. But thanks for this. It's nice to talk to someone. And I know it wasn't easy to ask. He smiles. I hope you find your way through your own troubles. 
Man, what a cool guy. I wish I could have heard his voice! Okay, so I reset the game and I'm hoping that might fix some of the issues I was having. Uh, I really hope so. <laughs> not sure if anyone else is having the same issues with the dialogue not being spoken, but I am really sorry that the whole scene was like cut off like that. I I wish I could have heard it instead of speaking it. I don't think I did it justice. Some great Teutonic forces cracked the pavement like an eggshell. Damn. Is this a uh, lieutenant's car? Before you stands a motor carriage. The bodywork is covered in blue and white livery, bearing the number 57. That's uh, Kim's precinct, right? Vapor emanates from the large engine on the back of the vehicle. It hasn't had time to cool off yet. This must be the infernal machine that tore you from oblivion. <laughs> what? In the cabin, you are welcomed by a set of steering levers, a radio microphone on a hook, a pull-out toolbox under the seat, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. Pick up the radio, pull out the pull-out toolbox, run your fingers over one of the steering levers, tap on the fuel preheater gauge. Kim, what are we looking at? What is this machine? This is the Kupris Kinema, my motor carriage. You can use the toolbox yeah. and the radio if you'd like. He nods at the cabin. Motor carriage, motor carriage. Something bad with a motor carriage. A dark lump rises in your throat. Huh. What is a sinking feeling I have with the words motor carriage? Can we turn it on and drive somewhere? This must be what woke me up when you arrived in the Martinez. The infernal noise. Do all policemen in the RCM have such cool motor carriages? The Cupris Motocar does provide most of our patrol vehicles, yes. What is this sinking feeling I have with the motor Nothing, motor carriage. Nothing. It's probably nothing. Forget I brought it up. Please proceed with the carefree lollygagging. <laughs> the dialogue in this game is so good. Can we turn it on and drive somewhere? This must be what's woke Yes, up. sorry about that. The Kupris Kinema does have a rather distinctive engine sound. He says it with very badly concealed pride. <laughs> what is the sinking feeling I have with the... Oh, I already asked that. Can turn on and drive somewhere? No, I'm afraid not. We have a murder case on our hands, remember? <laughs> Just turn around and deck him in the face. <laughs> Look around the cabin again. In the again. cabin, you see a set of steering levers, a radio on a hook, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. I love how my hand is just like in there <laughs> messing with everything. Tap on the fuel As you tap gauge. on the gauge, the indicator pin jerks as if startled. It's in the large orange sector, indicating the engine is warm. Next to the gauge is a red switch labeled heat. There's no use pressing the heat button. It won't start without the ignition key. Translation. Oh. We're not going anywhere right now. <laughs> Alternative translation. Don't even think you could drive me. <laughs> all right, Kim. All right, I won't. I'm only gonna drive your car. Kim is like, bag to fuck up. <laughs> Run your fingers over the one of the steering the levers. Suede feels luxurious under the touch, and the metal clutch handle so very familiar in your palm. Hmm. I wonder if I got in a car accident and that's how I lost my memory. And then I just came back to the hostel and drank my life away. <laughs> but I'm not, like, injured looking. I don't even have a limp or anything. <laughs> I'd love to see Kim's hand, like, twitch. <laughs> He's just like, stop touching my car. Pull out the uh, pull out the pull-out toolbox. The metallic drawer slides out from under the seat and clicks into place. The tools inside are neatly organized. <gasps> Take what you need, officer. It's going to be a long case. I'm not protective of my tools, like some men are. <laughs> He's clearly a little protective of his tools. <laughs> but what can you do? Work is work. Take the red tip pry bar, take the rubber handled chain cutters, take out the hang hand cranked flashlight. Push in and pull out toolbox. Um, can I take more than one? Uh, take the Pry bar. The pry bar feels nice and cold in your hand, heavier than you'd think. 
Can I take all of them? Useful for opening all sorts of doors and lids. Hmm. Take the rubber handled chain cutters. The handles are long and sleek. Snap, snap. Though the cutters in your hand. Nice. I can take all. It's robust, weatherproof, and well made. Police issue. Blue. <laughs> Let's you see things in the dark you would otherwise miss. Yes, that is the function of flashlight. Pull out toolbox. Slides back into its nest. Preheater gauge casts a warm glow on the steering needle and the radio talk? on its hook. Should I talk to anyone on the radio? Uh, pick the up radio. The frequency tableau lights up, and the green button labeled Prime Line glows like a feline eye. And then you hear something. Hello? The soft purr of electrical kittens. Radio waves cast far and wide over the metropolis. A woman's voice greets you through the static. This is Precinct 57. Hello, Lieutenant. How may I assist you? Oh my god, it's Black Widow. <laughs> Aw, her voice is so cute. Hello, Alice. Please assist our colleague from the 41st Precinct here. I'm putting him on. Operating the radio is easy. Just be confident. You've probably done it a thousand times. Come in, dispatch. Come in, dispatch. <laughs> Come in, Delta 10. This is Firewalker. Copy. <laughs> Hi, Alice. This is the officer from the 41st Precinct speaking. Nice to meet you. This is Officer Alice Demetri, Precinct 57. How may I assist you? The voice replies on the radio. Could you connect me to the 41st Precinct? I have something I need to report. Uh, I need you to connect me to a civilian. A Sylvie. She may have reported a murder. I'm done with the radio for now. Oh yeah, maybe we can talk to her. Of course. What is her number, officer? Uh, Kim, didn't Gart give you Sylvie's number? Yes, hold on. Her number is 005-1944-298. Received. Hold on, officer. Such a cute voice. Ow, my ears. <laughs> Start slapping a marching rhythm on your thighs. <laughs> Give it a minute. She might be busy at the moment. Takes a bit to get to the phone. Just wait. Relax. Okay, okay. Officer, I have Sylvie Malaika on the line for you. Yay. Yes, hello? Hello. A female voice greets you through static. It sounds like she's a million miles away from here. Hello, this is the police speaking. I have some questions for you about your last day's work. Sylvie, I believe we've met before. This is me, a detective from the Whirling and Rags. Um... I believe we met before? Oh, right. She recognized- Hello, officer. What can I do for you? <laughs> she recognizes your voice almost immediately. So we did talk to her before. You can hear resentment in her tone. She's not thrilled to be talking to you again. <laughs> Uh, oopsie. <laughs> it wasn't my fault. That was, um, this guy before I had control of him. You quit your job at the Whirling. Why? Was it you who called the police? I think I got everything I need, thanks. <laughs> uh, was it you who called the police? No, not me. But why didn't you call? Didn't the course behind your workplace bother you? Okay, do you know who made that call? Okay, next question. <laughs> do you know who made that call? No, sorry. I don't. <clears throat> Not a lot of people have phones around here. Copper thieves take the wires. Oh. People don't have the money to have the cables put in again. They use the union's phone, or the one on the coast. It was someone else. Hmm. We'll find them sooner or later, officer. It just might take a while. Um, okay, next question. Yeah, go on. You quit your job at the Rolling Y. You mean, why did I leave the bar? Honestly, I'm... Not really comfortable discussing it with you, sir. Wait, why aren't you comfortable discussing it with me? <laughs> it's not gonna help, dude. Alright, I won't put you on this. Are you ever coming back to work? Maybe, I don't know. I just know I have to take some time off right now. I think I got everything I need, thanks. I do hope so. Please, don't call me again. Bye. <sighs> why does she seem angry with you? This is a red check, it cannot be retried. I have a high chance, but I feel like I'm gonna fail it. I just have a feeling. Let's try it though. Yes. Oh. You have obviously done something to upset her at the whirling in rags when she was still working there. 
Wait, before you go, you're mad at me, right? Well, tell me, what did I do? I can't remember. I'm not mad, it's just... You were so drunk and so emotional all the time, and then the Skua thing happened. Skua? Just made me want to quit. What's Skua thing? So you're telling me I was the one who made you want to quit? What's Skua thing? The stuffed bird. The great Skua. You threw it against the wall while screaming, Fuck that bird! And laughing like a maniac. <laughs> okay. I think you said it had been giving you shit ever since you got there. <laughs> this sounds like me, all right. This doesn't sound anything like me. I love birds. Bitch bird got what was coming to her. Why do I always end up screwing everything up? Uh, um. I always end up screwing everything up. It was up. a pretty bird. There since I started working in Whirling. I really liked her. We call her Scotty. It was just a stuffed bird. There was genuine sadness in her voice. You're telling me I was the one who made you want to quit? Yes, obviously. You were the worst client I've ever seen. And I have seen so many assholes in this place. I've had sailors fighting, union guys grabbing my ass, kids stealing booze. Once a guy was glued to the karaoke machine every night for two months. But you... She pauses. Go on, I want to know what I did. Well, you were worse than all of them. Honestly, you were getting borderline aggressive. Even about little things like not turning down the volume at 3 a.m. I even liked one of those songs you kept listening to on repeat. No more. I I hate it now. Hold on, which song? We Go On by the OO. I can't listen to it anymore. You've turned it into a parody. Sorry. Sorry about the song. The hell with that song. Then there was your room. Your project. An experiment to see how bad it can get in there. I tried to send the cleaner, but you wouldn't let me. Threatened to make me understand. I had no idea what you meant. And I don't want to know. My character sounds like an asshole. And then you screamed something about how you're a piece of shit human being and why does anyone even let you work as a policeman that you <laughs> fire yourself, but you can't even do that. Um, <laughs> Kim is just standing there listening like, I'm sorry. That sounds intense. That's it? That's not so bad. Uh, I'm sorry. And then I had to deal with your toilet. The one you clogged with police documents causing water damage downstairs in the kitchen. I won't even mention you waving your gun around, harassing customers, threatening to sing karaoke, threatening to kill yourself. Wait, police do documents? I, oh, the ones I had to wrench out of your toilet. What happened to them? I, damn it, I don't remember what I did to your damn papers. I don't remember every little thing I do. Resentment gives way to concern in her voice. Especially when there's a hurricane loose, it's your fault for losing them. Not mine. Hurricane? Something in you wants to immediately forget about this, as if there was a reason you threw them away. Must be a case that I was working on and messed them up. I don't know. Okay, I get it. I wasn't a very good tenant. <laughs> no, you really weren't. You were simply the worst. I'm truly sorry for everything, Sylvie. I was trying to show you the world of tomorrow, the great panic at the end. Well, you're the worst tavern wench I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, no! Girl, just loosen up a little. Don't you ever party? Huh, I don't even know what to say. Uh, apologize, please. God, I, I knew I shouldn't have brought it up. Just try not to call me again, and let's pretend it never happened. What else did I sing besides the oh, oh I'm looking for a song. Oh, all, all sorts of things. From disco, rock too. So much disco and rock. Was I singing the smallest church in Saint Saint Sands? 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 Yes, that's the one you like to sing along to the most. The later it got, the more that one came on. Hmm. Interesting. You still have to find a copy though, before you can blast it. I'm glad I tried to talk to her again because that gave me a lot more information. Right. Thank you for talking with me. Take care. You hear a sigh of relief on the other end of the radio. Wordless, the call breaks. Then, the already familiar voice. Anything else I can help you with, officer? 
<sighs> no, I'm gonna leave Sylvie alone. Um, I'm done with the radio for now. 57, over and out. The voice appears into the void. In the cabin, you see a set of staring Okay. Leader. Well, that was something. Uh, are you judging me a little bit, Kim? Um, okay, nothing new here. Well, like I said, I'm glad I talked to Sylvie, because that gave me a lot of new information. Maybe a sea monster did this to the plaza. Can we sit? The worn and beaten wooden planks of the bench do not look overly comforting. Hmm. We can sit on benches after we've solved the murder. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Okay, I think we've messed around quite enough. Let's actually go look at the body now because we've just done so much. I think it's over here, right? Whoa. Hey, kid. Oh shit. Sounds like spoiled meat and curled dairy. Curled dairy. Human being decomposed. Thanks. The hanged man. The corpse looks at you with bulging white eyes. The face around them does not look human. It's swollen and ready to burst. His lips are fish like and his tongue like a ball gag in his mouth. You seem to be holding your breath. Look down. The cargo belt twists his neck at an unnatural angle. The body below appears stiff. It's letting out an ungodly rot. The smell seeps in through your clenched nostrils. God, what is that? Why is it so bad? Endurance, legendary. Let go of your nose without throwing up. Uh, no. <laughs> oh, I may retry it. No, just... Active, Active decay. Oh. <laughs> it's okay to throw up, officer. No one is judging. The lieutenant raises a white piece of linen to his nose. Oh, even he can't handle it. He's about to blow. Cock's gonna blow, Kuno. Kuno is. Oh, Kuno. That was uh, who the girl. Oh, she's over behind the fence over there. I see you. Uh, that's who she thought it was. Um, hold on, um, let's turn away for right now, um, I'm guessing that's Kuno. Hi. Is he throwing Kuno, rocks at it? Kuno, pretty close to me. Come to snuff my shit out, I think. Are you fucking kidding me? Hey, little shit. Whoa. Kuno's got this. The boy throwing rocks at the dead body can't be older than 12. If there ever was such a thing as an ugly kid, then this <laughs> is it. He's almost exquisite in his ugliness, like a gremlin. They're not wrong. Oh yeah, another goofy Kuno! Yells the other kid behind the fence. Hey kid, a word. Police business. Moment of your time, please. Um... Moment of your time, please. Can't talk, pig. Shit's coming up strong. Throwing rocks. Shit coming up strong. <laughs> that sounds good. Joyous. You should hang out with this kid and see what that juicy shit is <laughs> all about. What now? Juicy what now? I mean drugs. The kid's on drugs. Ah, yes. Yeah, Kuno! Ride the lightning, Kuno! This girl is so annoying. Kuno's rising at sea. He wipes the sweat from his brow and sends another rock flying. The rake, Kuno! You should throw the rake at him, Kuno! The fuck? Does Kuno know what a rake is? Kuno is not a gardener. Uh, do you always talk about yourself in the third person? Kim, what should we do? <laughs> Are you kids siblings? Kid, you want to hang out? I'm not a narc. Look, I have questions for you. <laughs> uh, Kim, what should we do? <laughs> we shouldn't do anything. I don't tempt such forces. What forces? You will see. Are you kids siblings? The fuck are you talking about? He throws another rock. He's calling us f Kuno! <laughs> Says we're fucking each other! Um, I didn't say that! Kid, you wanna hang out? I'm not an arc. No, look, I have questions for you. Alright, entertain the Kuno. 
Show me what you got. What you got there? What you got, huh? Show me what you got. I'm gonna punch this kid in the face. <laughs> Body. What do you know about it? About crime seeds. You kids often play in this yarn? I gotta ask, who's Kuno? Uh, I'm pretty sure he's just talking to him about himself in the third person. Uh, about the crime scene. You kids often play in this yard. Right, pig. This is where Kuno plays with his little wooden choo-choo. What do you want with it? I have questions later. For now, let's talk about something else. Yeah, whatever. Kuno doesn't give a shit. He spits over his shoulder, then looks back up at you. Body, what do you know about it? Shitload, pig. What's your question? Don't tell the pig shit, Kuno! <laughs> Whisper. Uh, Kim, help me out here. What do we want to know? <laughs> uh, or I don't have questions. Uh, Kim, help me out. If I were to want to waste my time, which I do not, I would ask them <laughs> who he is, how he got there, and the usual. <laughs> don't give me sass, okay? Do you know who he was? Do you know how it got up there? Have you seen any suspicious around? More on this later. Uh, do you know who he was? Kuno's fucking... Kuno uses the fucking for target practice. Okay. Do you know how I got up there? Probably climbed. Kuno was busy down the road when that shit went down. So you didn't see it happening? You heard Kuno. Kuno wasn't even in Martinez. Kuno wasn't in Revachol. Kuno wasn't regional. Uh, oh, okay. Where did you go then? I don't know. Some fucking... He looks around trying to come up with something. Mesk or... or I don't know. Some other place. Night City. Kuno is in fucking Night City. Uh, where is Night City? Kuno gives this info out on a need-to-know basis, <laughs> and you don't need to know. Kuno didn't <laughs> smoke the gimp, if that's what you meant. Uh, him, like, sniffing like that? <laughs> Have you seen anyone suspicious around? Just a couple of pigs sniffing around in the dirt. That seems pretty fucking suspicious to Kuno. Yeah, you tell the faggoty Kuno! Okay. You're testing Kuno's patience here. Yeah. Get lost! Uh... I gotta ask, who's Kuno? Kuno's Kuno, pig? He boy points to his chest with both thumbs. So you're free to yourself in the third person? Kuno, is that some kind of gang name? Uh, you refer to yourself in the third person. The fuck are you calling a third person? Kuno's the fucking first person? He looks slightly confused, but proud he came up with that retort. But right as he's getting distracted, you hear a malevolent hiss from behind the fence. Watch out, Kuno! He's trying to fiddle you! He's gonna put his hands on you! The thing behind the fence starts squealing, shrill and violent like a fire alarm. Help! I'm just going to leave. Yeah. Get out of here before the Kuno beats the shit out of you. Yeah, that's right. Drag your fat ass out of here, fat boy, before Kuno fucks you. Don't listen. Just go. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, just go. Hey, bitch. Kuno, the pig's getting pretty close to me. Come to snuff my shit out, I think. Looks like it's time for me to go, Kuno. Pigs come to take me in. I just wanted to ask some questions. Take another step closer. I'm going away for a long, long time, Kuno. Going away for life. What's going on there? Fuck are you trying to pull, pig? <laughs> These kids are so annoying. What are those strange words you use, girl? Hey, kid. Child. Converse with me. You there, behind the fence. <laughs> Uh, um, hey kid. What's this kid shit? Fucking mind games. I'd rather die than squeal. Get the fuck out of here, face. You got done. Talk to me. No. I'll die before I squeal, pig. What are those strange words you use, girl? I come from the woods, Kutabitu. You don't want to go there with me. You don't want to see what I've seen. Is she a witch? Don't be traumatizing here! Get the fuck out of here! These kids are so annoying. I'll die before I squeal, pig. Child, converse with me. Murder was the case. Was the case they gave me. She had she has almost vanished behind the fence, only top of her hat remains. I'll die.
Are He's you, there behind the fence. You don't want to fuck with me. I got my hands bloodied. I'm not here, pig. You're not seeing this. You can still see the top of her hat from behind the fence. <laughs> okay, Jesus. Okay. How about we actually look at the crime scene again? Uh, let go of your nose without throwing up. <laughs> the smell yeah, is no. repulsive. It pushes in from your mouth. More instant and more familiar than anything you'd expected. More fever than odor. It fills your mind. Flushing you from within. Try to walk away. Oh, yep. Yeah, I had a feeling that was gonna happen. <laughs> Ew. Why is it crunchy? Ew. Too late. It's impossible to keep in. Your body curls and pushes it out, burst by burst, until a pool of vomit lies under your feet and your throat stings from the stomach acid. I'm sorry. It's okay. Happens to everyone. Keep it. The lieutenant hands you his white handkerchief. Thanks. The hangover is clearly making this worse for you. You could use some ammonia to clear your head. You think ammonia would help? Okay, where do I get ammonia from? I don't need that shit. You think ammonia would help? If you can handle the headache. Some officers use it to deal with cadaverine odor. You think, uh, but not you? I can't handle the headache. Okay, where do we get ammonia from? There is Frit nearby, east of the hostel. They usually have a small apothecary. If they don't... He points to the greenhouse. There's a greenhouse here. And a gardener with a wheelbarrow on the corner of the whirling in rags. If she works here, she might have something for the smell. Okay. Thank you, Kim. Hey, so we've been monitoring you internally, and now we know your copo type. Wait, there are copo types? Okay, what am I? Guess. Cool cop? Some kind of weapon cop? Sorry cop? I'm sorry. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, that yes. one. Sorry cop. The cop who's sorriest. Let's make it official then, shall we? Huge lack of enthusiasm going on in here. <laughs> I mean, for me, I feel like it's appropriate because it's like an inside joke on the channel that I say sorry about everything. So, uh, okay, okay, but what are the other copper types? Um, won't the other copper types be jealous? I'm sorry, opt-in. You know, actually, I'm not sorry, I changed my mind. Fucking, they should be sorry. Um, what other copper types are there? What? Er jealous of the <laughs> sorry cop? I think they'll be fine. Don't worry. They'll be super, super fine. It'll be totally okay. You can dual copo type from sorry to anything. What are the other copo types? Oh, you know. Apocalypse. Super stellar. The advanced interesting cop. Liquid shadow cop. But you're too sorry to say those things. So, here we go. I'm sorry. <laughs> of course you are. It's okay. See if you can get something out of this. Like, info. Or maybe every time you say you're sorry, you get a million bucks. That would be cool. That won't happen. Damn it. <laughs> I tried. Okay, uh, can I climb up? Maybe get the body down? That would be great. This kid's ladder is rickety, but still climbable. Last ladder's for kids that wouldn't hold the weight of a grown man. Oh. Okay, I'm inside of Kim. That's not good. Um, am I gonna have to get them to get it down for me? Or maybe we could get him to like throw it at the at the rope and knock it down. Oh, what's this? This trash container is locked. The sliding lid has a padlock that says "whirling in rags." There's something in there, not necessarily connected to the case, but still. Why am I looking at you, trash container? You're just a trash container. <laughs> the body is downwind from here. Maybe you prefer the smell of garbage to the smell of death. Lieutenant, what do you think could be in here? Trash, food waste from the cafeteria. They lock these containers to keep the derelicts from flocking in. Could be evidence, too. 
Yes, I feel like there's something in there. Seems like a reasonable assumption. Then we should open immediately. I feel like there's something in there. What do you mean, feel? It's extrasensory perception. Whatever it is in there holds a special significance. It's just a hunch. Maybe someone threw something in there. Or nothing. Uh, um, it's just a hunch. Mm -hmm. He leans in to inspect the lot. Lock. How do we get the lock open? We could try using a pry bar. The one you took from my motor carriage, or... Or a lieutenant? Or we could ask for a key from the manager of the Whirling in Rags. He probably has one. That's true. Okay, force the jam, the tool... Okay, maybe we should just ask him for the key. He probably won't give it to me. If he doesn't, I'll just do it by force. Hey kid, can you go up the ladder and get the body down? Fuck this coon, okay? Figure out what's going on with this kid. Kuno, I, I throw up and I can't investigate the body now. <laughs> uh, figure out what's going on with this kid. I'm probably not going to get through. He's yeah. on your crime scene, bossing you around. And he's been here for some time, too. This is where he hangs out. You have to get more out of him. He could be useful. Yeah. Hey, Kuno, I think you can turn the Kuno down for a minute. Let's talk like normal people. I don't think that's going to go over well. Trying to fuck at the Kuno. Trying to fuck at me. Trying to fuck. Kuno only gets higher. It's faster, faster, faster. Can't take the Kuno. Stay out of the reactor. Kuno going to fuck you up. Up, up, up. Normal is not what we got here. You've got to work with what you have for now. Locked. Okay. Uh, I want to discuss the body with you again. The fuck about it? No. Your test. Get lost. Okay. That yeah. Seems... The kingdom of Kuno. The fuck there do you go. want with it? I was wondering about that trash container. Don't be wondering about Kuno shit, pig. You got a very strong hunch there's something of importance in it. Something I must find. Fuck does Kuno care about your hunch? That's your shit. You figured it out. Okay. The ladder ever climb it? Point to the ladder on the tree. Look at that fucking shit! You're trying to get Kuno killed! So, you would say that ladder is unclimbable. Fuck does Kuno know? Kuno's not a fucking acrobat! Lieutenant takes a quick note in his notebook. <laughs> it's a trap, Kuno! Don't climb it, Kuno! Yeah, whatever. Kuno doesn't give a shit. Hmm. Uh, Kuno, I threw up. <laughs> yeah, like a fucking volcano. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking pathetic. You're lucky you didn't die there. Maybe you got some advice for me? I mean, you're obviously handling it quite well. Screw both of you. I <laughs> forget it. Uh, you're handling it pretty well. Yeah. Kuno's got some advice for you. Kid looks to his left and his right and then leans towards you. He's gonna punch me in the face. What are you? <laughs> like, easy, right? Maybe you should stop embarrassing yourself in front of a fucking kid. Hmm. Perhaps you could compress this negative energy and turn it into some sort of a kunified non-vomiter. <laughs> uh, what? Kunified non-vomiter, here I come. I don't think so. Uh, here I come. That's right. Turn your weaknesses into conceptual strengths. Try it again now. Okay, I'm Kuno off. doesn't fuck it. Okay. <laughs> I'm done with him. Did it give me a higher chance of not throwing up? Nope. Okay. This. Something's trying to grow herbs in this greenhouse. It's over here. Nice. Magnesium. Cool. This winch mechanism has been oxidizing for some years. Oh. Footprints? It's probably ours. There are several footprints in the mud. Left by work boots. Anywhere from six to twelve pairs have walked here. Uh, what kind of boots? Get an exact count. Get an exact count. Maybe hey. more than twelve. No. Eight pairs of boots have shuffled back and forth in the mud. Go over them one by one. Or not now. Uh, go over them one by one. One. Standard work boot. Steel reinforced toes. Number 46. 
two, standard work boot, steel reinforced toes, number 44. Three, hobnailed work boot, steel reinforced toes, number 43. Four, standard work boot, number 45 or 46. Wait, which is it? You don't know. It's a miracle you can tell the prints apart as it is. The cold must have preserved them. Count more. Five. Another standard work boot. Steel reinforced toes. Number 44. Six. An aberration. Light as air. Even pace. Same make of boot, but number 41. Male or female? Impossible to tell. Could also have been an adolescent. The gait is undeveloped. Maybe it's Kuno. Pretty good at this, ain't I? You're not bad. It's as if the whole world darkens. Everything else has a thin film of our oh, importance on it. And the tracks burn in the middle of it in a strange, beautiful way. Count the rest. Seven. The glowing outline of a standard work boot. Number 46. But the imprints are twice as deep as the others. The weight exceeds 200 kilograms. This Eight. is so cool. And yet another standard work boot. Number 44. There's an aberration in the pattern of the sole, however. The right sole is smoother, more worn. How many? The lieutenant has been tracking her eyes movements. Eight. Four hundred million. Say nothing. Eight. I was pretty off then. I can't hit twenty. The same guys are going back and forth. Way off. Way. <laughs> Um, the same guys are going back and forth. I never got the hang of it. Hyperopia. Do you see anything out of the ordinary? Point. Light step number 41 shoe. Point. Heavy one 200 kilogram imprint. Point. An aberration. One sole is smoother than the other. How old do you think these tracks are? This is so cool. This is so cool. Um, so there's eight different people. Maybe this guy was also a worker. I forgot if they even talked about who this guy was, but my guess is that there's a bunch of these, um, there's a bunch of union workers who hate the police and they see themselves as their own police. Maybe this guy was an undercover cop or something? I don't know. That's a pretty wild assumption. Uh, light step number 41. Shoot. A woman or a kid? Uh, could be a woman, could be a kid. I don't think there's any way to be sure. Could be a woman. Okay. How do you know? He knows it's hard to discern sex from a person's gait. I don't. I just do. I'm just saying random things while looking at holes in the mud. I have no idea where any of this is coming from. <laughs> I don't. Understood. Anything else? A heavy one. 200 kilogram imprint. 200? Could it be the combined weight of two people, one carrying the other who's tied up? Let's say a heavily built worker carrying a similarly built, soon-to-be-dead man. Right. He might be right. 200 kilograms of living weight is unlikely. One of them was carrying him over. Maybe it was a giant? <laughs> Could be of an extremely obese person. I don't know. Uh, one of them was carrying him over. I think that's more likely because I think maybe they killed him somewhere else and then tied him up. I don't think he died up there. One of them was carrying him over. Possibly, yes. Lieutenant marks something down in his notebook. An aberration. One soul is smoother than the other. Interesting. Let's name it the old soul. Do you have any ideas, Lieutenant? Someone operating a workbench with a pedal? Like a joiner at the harbor. Or maybe a drummer? Hmm. He regrets it the moment he says it. <laughs> like a... Okay. So, one of the- <laughs> a drummer? That's stupid. One of the people we're looking for is a drummer. Don't say anything, just nod. Uh, just nod. I don't know why I said that. We are not <laughs> looking for a drummer. We are looking for a group of duck workers. He's so cute. Oh, I have a soft spot for Kim. Perhaps it could be a driver. A driver would wear out the right shoe before the left. The accelerator is on the right. Not thoughtfully. I was actually thinking the same thing. Interesting, if only I'd come up with that idea. Uh, if only I had thought of that idea. He doesn't seem to hear you. 
Looking to south towards the traffic jam instead. The machines are silent. The engines are all turned off. We should keep our eyes open around the traffic jam. See whether anyone's trout is a potential suspect. Seems prudent, no? Yes, prudent. Not sure. We don't want to attract too much attention. Uh, we don't want to attract attention. You're right. right. Let's keep a low profile. Uh, how old do you think these strikes are? Did I already ask that? A week, maybe? Seven days would fit the time frame provided to us by the caller, who reported the hanging. It yeah. is not impossible. How do you know? I pulled last week's forecast for coastal Havashol. Seven days below freezing. The day before, the day of his hanging, was the last one day. Oh, so that would make sense that their footprints would like kind of sink into the mud, and then once it froze, it froze their footprints. That's Correct cool. Correct again. Sub-zero temperatures would preserve the tracks in a good state. The commotion here could have taken place a week ago. Smart. What do you think happened here? What do I think? A mob of people brought something heavy to the tree. One of them was carrying the victim. They shuffled around, especially under the tree. Then, after hoisting him up, they stood in a semicircle facing his direction. At first glance, this appears to be a lynching. Right, but maybe that's not the case. Indeed. They all stood in a row here and looked at the tree. Like admiring their work. That's so creepy. Uh, we've been through all of it. Very, very cool. Okay, uh... Is there anything else here? Don't know. I don't want to talk to those kids again. <laughs> The letter R wears a crown. On the ribbon below, a light above descending. Okay. Can we look at my journal in here? So, chain cutters. The meanest looking pair of cutters you've ever seen. Made in Gottwald by Walsham Works. Nope. I don't know what that word is, so I'm not even going to try. No chain, wire nor barb fence will ever stand in your way again. They look hungry, ready to chew steel. Well, that's a cool design. Police flashlight bearing the logo of Grunstelling Stellung. Nope, I don't know. Nope. Mm -mm. RAO. The small dynamo packed inside this handheld illumination device theoretically gives you the ability to produce a tiny amount of electricity anytime, anywhere. Thick leg test gloves, gardening gloves, and a classic canary yellow. Maybe you should retire. Take up gardening as a hobby. It's worth a thought. <laughs> what if I can put those on? Yeah, I can. Look at that. I'll keep them on in case I need them. Lieutenant's handkerchief. Oh, I can sell it. I don't want to sell it. The handkerchief given to you by Lieutenant Kitsuragi. One corner is adorned with lace and a tiny embroidered portier. Portier. I say that. Aw. That's cool that he gave you the handkerchief and it's literally in your inventory. I thought it was just like a little little, little thing. <laughs> um, I think we will look at everything. Yeah, we've been through all of it. Okay. Um, can I do anything now with the body now I have gloves? No, I don't want to talk to you. Okay, no, I don't think so. Let's look... Uh, here we go. We have a lot of tax, tasks to get through. Rigorous self-critique. You're one sorry piece of shit. Cop penitent. A flag, flagellant cop monk. This is not the right line of work for you. You should be groveling at the feet of a feudal lord, providing lurid evidence against yourself at... A Mazovian show trial or ripping the flesh from your back with a cat of nine tails. What are you talking about? <laughs> Whatever made you this way, you can be damn sure it was your own fault. Do it. Really. Criticize yourself. Who knows? You might uncover something of importance from your guilt-ridden past. Oh, I think I do have a skill. Oh, no, I don't. Damn. <laughs> oh, look at that. Experience. Nine... Ninety-five out of a hundred, so maybe... Maybe soon. I need five more points, and then hopefully I can upgrade something. Okay. 
Oh wait, I didn't even look at my tasks. Okay. Open trash container. There's a locked trash container behind the whirling rags. The manager guards should have a key. Alternatively, you should use brute force to pry the lid open. You just need a pry bar. I already have it, but I want to see if I can get a key. The pissing competition. <laughs> Apparently there was a pissing match between Precinct 41, yours, and Precinct 40, 57, Kim's. Ask Kim about this after the initial inspection of the, of the dead body is done. I wonder if I can ask him now. Find booze and drink it. I'm not going to do that. Pneumonia from the gardener. Oh, okay. So, uh, it's store. So we need to go to the the thingy. Inspect the body in the backyard. Preliminary inspection. You just need to suppress the urge to throw up and approach it. Okay. Get ammonia from her store. So we need to figure out where her store is. Hello. So cute. Hi. Hello, sir. And Annette. Step right in. The store is open. So cute. A young girl with chubby red cheeks waves at you, smiling. Her nose is also red from the cold. Hello. I'm the law. <laughs> Hi. Are Hello. you interested in a new and exciting book? She stomps her feet to feel warmer. What kind of store is this, anyway? Is it okay if I ask you some questions? Not really. <laughs> what kind of store is this, anyway? Is she not gonna read anything either? Oh, shit. It's a bookstore, sir. We sell books, postcards, and some board games. She points at the window. It's called Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Hold your horses, little girl. Oh. Oh, he, he doesn't understand what that means, apparently. What is a book? <laughs> What's a postcard? What's a board game? Don't be ridiculous, I know all these things. You're fooling nobody. Don't you sass me. <laughs> I said I know all these things and I do, goddammit. Don't you sass me. Sir, are you okay? <laughs> You've been standing here silently for a while now. What kind of store is this anyway? Uh, is it okay if I ask you some questions? Okay, sir. I'll try to answer any questions you have. I hope they're about books. She's so cute. What is your name? My name is Annette, sir. My mum... Her name is Plaisance. Plaisance. She owns the store. She's inside, minding the register, or organizing the stock. Feel free to step in and browse our wares. And you're standing out here in the cold because? I'm signaling that the store is open. Otherwise, people might not know. They'd miss out on the crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. I want to take her home with me. She's so precious. A sudden gush of wind turns the pages of the books on the counters. She covers her face, smiling. But she's cold. <laughs> okay, guys, I don't know if you noticed, but at some point my mom walked in the room. And she brought me bacon. This is so good. Mm. This is so good. You're cold. Can I help in some way? I should have a word with the store owner, maybe. Such a good trooper you are, already learning the value of hard work. Pat her head. That's so demeaning. I could help by brutally dismantling the free market. Uh, you're cold. Can I help in some way? Kind of you to offer, sir. She doesn't know what else to say. What could you do to help her anyway? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I should have a word, a word with the store owner, maybe. Oh, no, no, sir. I'm happy to help Mum by luring in customers. Besides, I have some hot juice in my vacuum bottle to keep warm. <laughs> oh my god. Should he be at school or something? What is this crime business? What is romance? Who are these famous people? <laughs> Should he be at school or something? That's kind of mean though, isn't it? Uh, who are these famous people? Oh, kings and queens and generals of old, or artists and writers. Or musicians, those kinds of people. There's usually something extraordinary about them. Extraordinary. I think that's why people read them, to find the secrets of their fame. Seems like most people who read those books fail to get more famous from reading them. Reading those doesn't make the readers more famous, does it? <laughs> but it does make the famous people more famous. She smiles gleefully. Fame sounds delicious. Maybe someone will write a book about me one day. 
famous for vain people. I have better things to do. These famous people sound like a bunch of dorks. Uh, I don't like any of these options. Uh, Why would they do that, sir? Because I'll be a superstar cop in the papers and everything. That'll show them. Hmm, why indeed. I'm just an old, tired cop. What use am I? Let's, let's try to make her laugh, I guess. That's so cool. Maybe they'll make you a book cover picture and everything. Standing over a dead body, holding a gun. Yeah. <laughs> See you around, Annette. Okay. Well, that's not the store that I'd like to go to, but let's look around. You like to read, Kim? A book about... Something culture promotes freedom and roaming upstream. A book about the future. The government reads your mind using radio technology. Sounds le legit. This book, you don't really understand what it's about, nor does it seem important. It takes willpower to even read the author's name. Juan Cos. Boss. From... I didn't read that. On the cover stands a very muscular man, surrounded by flames. Look, Kim, it's me. This book has a rose, a pistol, and a half-naked dame on its cover. Sounds about right. So, where's the store that we we're supposed to go to? This is like a gardening store. Oh. This coin-operated viewer has been banged up. Inoperable. Shit. Whoa. No. This damage looks like it could be done by an earthquake. Yes. Hi. Is this a statue? Is that a real man? Oh, it's a real man. Jeez. Have you no shame? Whining about your back every time you bring out the measuring tape. Rene, you are a man with a fork in a world of soup. Please, let's just try to enjoy the game, all right? The other one is eating a big sandwich. I'm trying to, but you keep breaking my concentration. <laughs> You're old. I can see that. We're both old. Now stop grabbing your ass like it's a girl. <laughs> These manly men are playing balls. This is a ball game. Grab a ball and play it. Don't ask questions. Shoot first. Ask questions I don't never. really have time for this. Should I ask if the game is first? No. You got this. There's the ball. You're the game. Better reserve them first. Hand-eye coordination. Medium. Grab the ball and show them how it's done. Moment of your time, fellows. Don't get involved in the game. I'll leave you to it. Uh, let's go back to them. I'm sure we'll have time later. Okay, I just gotta figure out where the gardening shop is. Can I talk to you again? Hello again, officer. Oh, yeah. How are things? My partner told you... Oh, my partner told me you may have some, have ammonia. Can I have some? Sure. Oh. I'm done with it. This girl is so helpful. She takes the small capsule out of her breast pocket and hands it to you. Go easy on that stuff. It gave me a terrible headache. I have to run. Alright. So now we can examine the body, right? And I have gloves, so it should work. Okay. Uh, has pneumonia. Couldn't find non vomiter. You crack hey. open the ammonia ampoule and breathe in. The odor of death is still stronger. It's a spell of the mind telling you to run and your stomach to wring itself empty. With your eyes squinting, you stand in it. Do they always do that? Oh, well, they do after seven <laughs> days, yes. We are deep in decomposition here. The man before you is naked, but for a pair of underpants and enameled boots. His skin is greenish, marbled with decaying veins and blotched by lividity. A fading web of tattoos covers his chest and shoulders. The cargo belt is used to fasten him to the branch above. It appears industrial in strength. Inspect the boots, inspect the belt, inspect the tattoos, look in the eye, squint and take a step back. So how do we get him down? Uh, shouldn't we get him down first? We should have a look at that belt before we even consider taking him down. It looks worrisome. 
He points to the belt around his neck. I mean, even if we try to untie it, I feel like it's just gonna snap. Inspect the boots. The material appears to be ceramic. Its clean white stands in stark contrast to the decaying flesh above the knee. The man wore thick poly polymer socks, probably for padding. A fine array of interlocking plates covers them. Delicate and fragile. They feel alien to the world around you. Out of place somehow. Yeah, they look really weird, like futuristic. These are clearly not boots. They're armor. Possibly part of a larger set. Hmm. These aren't just boots, are they? This is the armor he was stripped of. Indeed. Technically speaking, these are sabatons, not boots. What kind of armor is this exactly? Ceramic plate. Zirconium dioxide, most likely. This is where the make would be. Where? Under the hill. Fairweather. Fairweather model T500VE. I'm guessing that's vitreous enamel. This is advanced stuff. Where's the rest of it? Scavenged by the locals? The material looks out of place here. Knock the boot. Knock on the boot. Pull the boot off. Back off and look at the corpse. Where's the rest of it? Piece by piece. He's been out here for seven days. It would be odd if they didn't. Huh. We should keep a look up for these pieces. The armor oh. could yield information. Maybe he'll know something. <sighs> I don't want to talk to him again. <laughs> Maybe he was just wearing the boots and there's no rest of the armor. No, he must have worn something precious underneath his clothes. They've removed all his clothes to get to it. They did not just strip him for the putrid rags. Then where are these clothes? Have you seen any around? What if they told him to strip before they hung him to demean him? They usually hang them completely naked for that. La puta madre, the Mazda, the Besmertis and the like. This one still has his underpants. That's true. <laughs> fucking talking about underpants. I am so close to punching a child in the face. The material looks out of place here. It is. It's expensive. The lieutenant draws a line in the condensation on the ceramic with his index finger. You're contaminating the crime scene. Oh, he has gloves under. We've requested similar material for our tactical units for years now. The constabularies deemed it too costly. In that time, we've lost six men to semi automatics. How much are we talking about? For a full set, about four years of wages. ka -ching, baby! <laughs> now to the boots. That's a lot, I take it. As a wage, it's regrettably small. But for a piece of hardware, yes, that's a lot. How could this man afford such expensive hardware? That's for us to find out. My initial report on the area suggests he was a security guard for the harbor company. But that's just hearsay. Initial report? Just something I scraped together from my station. An area report on Martinez. I'm sure you did the same. Uh, yeah. <laughs> He's not actually sure of that. He's just being tactful. These look pretty advanced for a security guard. I agree. This equipment is way beyond what a guard can afford. Uh, knock on the boot. <laughs> Small bell-like sound fills the air, like tapping on the side of a porcelain cup. Sounds fragile. It's anything but. This material is a kinetic redistributor. It spreads kinetic energy horizontally, from plate to plate, dissipating it entirely. See? Faint organic lines cover the plates where they separate into smaller ones. These plates d then divide into smaller plates until there are hundreds of them altogether. Like whirls of floorboards. The design looks organic, influenced by highly resistant wood materials, like lignum vitae. An ebony, perhaps. What does this remind me of? If trees were made of porcelain, this is what their cross-sections would look like. Run your finger over the lines. The smooth, glossy surface fractures into ever more intricate interconnections, peaking on the right sabaton, where you notice. The whirls are in the shape of a letter and number combination. E50, 100, 1000. Point to it. Looks like there's a serial number on the right sabaton. Good. Can you read it to me? He tips the drawing ball of his pen in, on his tongue. E50, 100, 1000. You have a make and a number. That's something. We can use the radio in my kinema when we're done. Either station can chase it for us. Uh, okay. <laughs> I don't think I should, but pull the boot now off. This feels dangerous. 
Are you sure? Better not try. <laughs> let's look off. Let's look at the rest before we do that. Inspect the belt. The hangman's knot is pulled tight by the weight of the corpse below. Yellow, hard-edged polyester cuts into his neck. Above, a sliding buckle ties the belt into the branch. What kind of rope is this? Industrial strength. You can use for tying cargo to lorries. Like in the harbor? In a, I can't even come up, with, come up with anything other than a harbor. Like in a harbor. Yes, it looks like they use whatever was on hand, paying no attention to not incriminating themselves. Yeah. We're assuming the dock workers from the harbor did it. They sure want him to stay there. The polyester seems strong. How did they even get him up there? Uh, we're assuming the dock workers from the harbor did it. How'd they even get him up there? A noose is one of those things that's easier to use one way around. He points to the buckle, tying the belt to the branch above. Did they climb up using the kid's ladder? Point to the one at the side of the tree. That ladder can't carry a grown man. I didn't see any splintering either, did you? I think they lassoed the branch, then pulled on the belt to close the buckle. Yeah. He makes a pulling motion. <laughs> uh, we're assuming the dock orders from Harbor did it. I'm still approaching this as a lynching, yes. Motivated by the ongoing strike. You? No. You feel like it was something else. But what? Makes sense. Believably mundane. <laughs> I feel like it was something else. Don't ask me. I'm just lumbering from one moment to the next. Accurate. I feel like it was something else. Yes. It often is. This bell worries me. I sure want him to stay there. The polyester seems strong. It's not merely polyester. It's still reinforced. See these lines? This is where the wires run. I see rabbits for more than 20 strands. This makes getting him down much more problematic than I had assumed. I don't know. It just looks like a little tug and he's gone. Back off and look at the corpse. Inspect the tattoos. An intricate web of blue lines stretch from the, across the torso. From the right shoulder to the solar plexus, e each time they intersect, a small white star is formed in their crossing. Hundreds of fading asterisks riddle his skin. Their concentration is highest around his heart. His corpse is marked by stars. What will mine be marked by? Alcohol and heartbreak. <laughs> is this a map of the night sky? Is this a microelectronic system? Is this a national pattern? <sighs> is this a national pattern? Of no nation that I know of. If anything, it reminds me of religious illumination, last or penultimate century. Men who live harsh lives often turn to innocentic worship. But which one? I see no trace of a humanoid figure. We're missing something here. I agree. Oh jeez, it scared me. A sudden ring fills the air as the lieutenant pulls down the zipper of his orange he jacket. He takes a thin piece of milled aluminium from his coat pocket and pulls it open. Sounds like a sword being unsheathed. A small lens appears. Some sort of camera. Let the lieutenant work. Shit, Kuno! Is that? It's a camera. A color camera. Oh, she asked for me. <laughs> he produces two metal capped ampoules and clicks them into place on the side of the apparatus. A thin slot shines there. I have only two ampoules, so ampoules. nobody move. I don't want to waste one. He points to the camera. He points the camera at the cars peering into it. The lens needs adjusting. Then a sound, a shrill flash. Followed by the breaking of a small ampoule of glass, you see streams of color pour onto the thick, glossy piece of paper, rolling out. That's crazy. In case we need it. On it, a color perfect copy of the dead man's tattooed chest. In case we need it, the lieutenant says and shakes the paper, letting it dry in the cold wind. Cool machine. What do we need this photo for? Cool machine. <laughs> yes. It is pretty cool, isn't it? <laughs> He's so cute. He slides the camera close and tucks it away in his belt. There is only one ampoule left. Use it wisely. I'm scared. What do we need this photo for? It contains insight to the victim's person. By his build, I'd say this was a man of physical violence. The story he wanted his body to tell was important to him. It is his letter. To us. 
Someone should decipher it. We'll need to show it around. Can I have it? I should look at it later without the core smell. Uh... Sure. Just don't lose it. <laughs> he did not want to give it to me. You can see the piece of rolled up photo paper. It's no longer than a pack of cigarettes. Okay. Now let's look him in the eye, I guess. His eyes are milky white and blind to the world, protruding comically from their sockets. There is no one home. Just subaquatic terrors there. Dark brown hair grows on his head. His face is ready to explode from the organic processes inside. This is so gross. The death's head grin has passed. The death's head grin has passed. What remains is an unrecognizable mess. Underneath the curl of meat, there is an expression. Not carried on his features, but below, inside. An expression of pleasure. This man was experiencing joy at the moment of his death. This man enjoyed the moment of death. What? Inland Empire, tell me who are you, dead man? I'm gone. Where have you gone? I can see you're gone, but who are you? Why is this happening? I hate you. You stink and you're boring. <laughs> Why were you feeling pleasure when you died? Maybe I was getting my rocks off. First, why do you have to speak like that? What dialogue dialogue is that anyway? So you were feeling sexually arousal when they were hanging you? Do I look like an erotic auto-asphyxiation type to you? Yes. No. What is erotic auto-asphyxiation? Um, no. Captain Capodromo, I fear we're drifting away, fixating on sexuality again. Let's go with a simpler question. Where have you gone? Into the, <coughs> into the wild pale yonder. Where is that? In the past. Way out west. I can see you're gone, but who are you? I'm a joke. Look at me. There's nothing funny about you. You are now, but who were you when you were alive? There's nothing funny about you. There's nothing funny about jokes either. Who were you when you were alive? A killer, a motherfucker, and a killer. I have another question for you. Go ahead, Kobo. What's happening? I need, to, I need to make a voice for you. What do you mean? Talking to you. Never mind, I want to. I'm talking to you. It's the power of your... Black frothy liquid starts to bubbling on his lips. Imagination. Horrific necktie. <laughs> yeah, man. Don't be crazy. Inanimate objects and dead people can't really talk to you. Your wild imagination is doing this. Ask some more of those questions you love so much. He loves those. <laughs> I don't know what these voices are. Why do I love questions questions so much? Because you're a coparoni. Look at all of them go. Do you want more questions? Yeah, give me questions. Here you go, you loony. Why is this my name Rooney? <laughs> Why do I feel like I've forgotten something terrible? Because you have. Is my name Rooney? Fuck you. You know Rooney. I do strike myself as a Rooney. Rooney is obviously not who I am. Between you and me, your name is probably Harry. I feel like I've been getting a lot of Harry lately. No, I can't be Harry. I refuse. Could I really be Harry? You can be anything you want to be, Brother Capo. <laughs> hey, you. You stink and you're boring. Do I remind you of someone? A deep sea creature, a baby affected with harlequinism. You don't remind me of anyone. Deep sea creature. No, not quite. Be fair now. A baby? You should have wriggled out of that one, Capaloni. <laughs> what? <laughs> Enough. You can come back and look into this face anytime you want. Humor yourself with my harlequin features. Ask me your little questions. Freshen your memory. This is such a bad accent. Create associations. Remind yourself of your morality, Coppolo. Coppolo Po? <laughs> Squint and take a step back. As you narrow your eyes, the monster before you blurs into a violent mess of green and pink. Observe. Archer's barking. I'm sorry if you hear her. 
Only the lower extremities are pink with a dash of blue. His fatted hands, thighs, and his neck just above the noose. The rest of the corpse appears dark green in the cold spring air. I'm squinting, Kim. Why am I doing it? How should I know why you are squinting, officer? <laughs> I don't know either. Maybe I should just stop. Squint harder. His face and hands are pink, thighs too, the rest is greenish. Oh. You are trying to assess lividity. <laughs> don't laugh at me. Relax your eyes. The monster comes back into focus, an explosion of color, coursing with dark marbled veins. His stomach appears pregnant with something. Black liquid streams down his thigh and onto his boot. So Ooh. what do you think? I think he's dead. <laughs> I don't know what to think. What do you think? Cover your nose. Something is coming out of him. <laughs> he's beaten up. See the bruises? Back off and catch your breath. He's beaten up. See the bruises? Yeah, obviously. I do. Most of them are post-mortem. Maybe even all of them. The delinquents have made our jobs harder. <sighs> With their little spot. Yeah. Stop talking in riddles, coin slot. He means he fucked Fuck him you. up good, Kuno. Fucked him up brutal like. Something is coming out of him. <laughs> A pool of blood and feces has eaten into the frozen mud below the man's feet. Purge liquid is dripping into it drop by drop. The victim appears to have contained no more than half a kilogram of digestion at the time of death. The fuck he's saying? <sighs> talking about shit. <laughs> we got lucky. Maybe he went to the toilet sometime before death. Goddamn right, I'm <laughs> turn around and yell. No, I'm not gonna do that. Maybe he went to the toilet sometime before death. Maybe. Whoa, what happened to the lighting? What just happened? What well, just happened? Did anyone else notice that? I don't know what to think. What do you think? I think he was upright immediately after death. Blood has gathered in his hands and feet. And his neck. He points to his fatted chin. The noose acted like a tourniquet, keeping the blood in his head. The hypostasis here is in tune with the hanging. That's what I think. Yep, seems like a lynching to me. Could be he was moved after death? Maybe he was strangled by someone. Could it be he was moved after There's death? There's always a chance. We should check for ligament marks on his neck to see if they're in tune with the belt. We'll have to get him down first. Okay. Uh, we looked at the belt. Now how do we get him down? Something I need to know, of course, man. Oh, okay. No. I don't need to do that. Are you sure we finished the preliminary examination of the cadaver? We might miss some of these things once he's done. Um, I think we're good. Mm. The steel reinforced belt presents a unique challenge. I brought chain cutters. But I don't see a good angle of approach to the belt. The cadaver is a good 1.2 meters up. Neither one of us can reach the belt without assistance. And even if we do, there's the question of cutting it. Can't someone else do it? We saw- we could saw the branch. Seems like a lot of hassle, let's not do it. Maybe we could just shoot him down? <laughs> Maybe you can ask for some help from the harbor? Maybe- I'm out of ideas, let's have another look at him. Uh, can someone else do it? Someone else? You mean, like... The police? <laughs> yes, exactly. Call the police. <laughs> you have a point there. I mean, someone who's below detective. Like a lieutenant. <laughs> you have a point there. Sadly, yes. The whole RCM is out there right now, doing the exact same thing we are. Are we in a rush to help them? Not with this on our hand. He covers his nose. I know it's hard, but I assure you, the others won't come to help us. And we have a growing sanitary concern here. We need to get him down fast. Maybe we could ask for help from the harbor. I was really hoping we wouldn't. The Union appeared to be suspect in this case. It seems like a dangerous route to go down. <sighs> yeah, let's reconsider. We could saw the branch. Climb up there and saw the branch? Seems dangerous. There has to be a less risky way, with less falling down of trees. <laughs> um... We could shoot him down. That's such a stupid thing. Um, no, we have to do it. I don't have ideas. Let's have another look at him. It's kind of falls deep into thought. Um, yes, we do. Like... Okay. We had to ask for help from the harbor. Okay. They do have the tools and the men. 
And since it looks like they put him there... They can get him down too. <sighs> okay. Let's do it in the lousy, dangerous way. But wouldn't it be dangerous? How do we get inside the harbor? Let's get to it then. How do we get inside the From harbor? From the gates. By negotiating or fighting. I'm unenthusiastic about fighting. Or <laughs> we can try to find some secret third path. It's an act little. But won't it be dangerous? To ask the suspect for help with the victim's body? To be indebted to Everard Claire? Very much, yes. Which is why I would have preferred us to handle this ourselves. Well, we're out of options, Clearly Kim. We can't. Exactly. My dick, bitches. <sighs> Who's Everard Claire? The leader of the Union. A dangerous and corrupt man, from what I hear. You don't want to owe him much. Yeah? Don't go being someone else's bitches. Your kudos, bitches. Okay. <laughs> Is it just me or did the lighting change drastically? Was it- is it just like changing the time of day or something? Hi Kuno. Fuck does Kuno care? Kuno doesn't- He doesn't care. Okay, I get it. Uh, I don't think there's really anything else we can do around here. Let's see. Oh! Oh, I can get- one of these upgrades, right? Yeah, level up. Cool. Let's. I'm gonna look through these real quick and see which one I want to upgrade. Okay, so I've decided to go with rhetoric. Practice the art of persuasion. Enjoy rigorous intellectual discourse. So that way, maybe I can argue with people a little better. Yes. Revert. Oh. Accept changes in clothes. Cool. I like it. Okay. So we have a bunch of different things here. Get the body down. Somehow make it so that the bloated corpse isn't up there anymore. Shoot it down or ask for help. Do something. You're a cop. Access the harbor and ask for Everett Claire's help. Victim's tattoos. You have a photo of the hangman's tattoos. Maybe someone can decipher them, tell you what they mean. Run the number on the victim's armor. You discovered a serial number on the victim's ceramic armor boots. Run the number using Lieutenant Kutsuragi's shortwave in his motor carriage. Okay. Let's uh, try to open the trash container. In order to do that, I think we have to go back inside. And uh, talk to uh, Gart. I swear it's Garte. I guess not. I have a pry bar. Yeah, well, I want to do it this way first. If not, I'll try the pry bar. And I want to listen to this music again. <laughs> hey, we back. Let's try to wake this guy up. The worker is in a deep slumber. A colorful piece of plastic is dangling from his carabiner. Mm, makes your fingers itch. Let's wake the piece of plastic on his cabinier. It's a dock worker's ID doubling as a shift card and a job permit. A young, able-bodied man stares back at you from the photo. Santiago S. John. Hmm. Uh, challenging, wake him up. Facing, steal the dock worker's ID. Uh, no, let's just wake him up. There is only one way to wake this bone idol from his slumber. <laughs> oh, Roar no. like a hurricane. Rip the buildings from the earth. Wake up! This is an order. I am the law. Why the yelling man? <laughs> I'm sorry. The 30-something man lifts his head up and gives you a pensive look. You're alive? You looked out for the long count. You're alive? You looked out for the long count there. I just wanted to see what would happen if I yelled. <laughs> I need you to answer some questions right now. Really? You woke me up for that? The worker gives you a vacant stare. What is it, officer? Officer, <sighs> even after a rude awakening, this dock worker respects the police. More than they usually do, at least. Hmm. Okay. See anything interesting in your dreams? Tell me about Wild Pines. Point to the writing on his overalls. Why are you sleeping here while others are out striking? Who's behind the organ who's behind organizing the strike? What about the dead body in the yard? Yours? Point at the bottle in the spill room. Alright, I'll let you sleep. Uh see anything no, tell me about the wild pines. That's the name of my employer. Now I work in logistics. 
He doesn't sound too enthusiastic about this. How's that going? How's it going? <sighs> Doc Worker lets out a big yawn, then stares at the cafeteria's Terrence doors. Some fingerprints gl glisten on the glass. Haven't you noticed what's going on outside? <laughs> of course, it's a total madhouse. I'm not sure what you mean. I have almost never been outside this building. Uh, of course, it's a total madhouse. Good. Then you understand the gist of it. We would all be better off without the employers and their employment. For one, I can get some goddamn shit on. He rubs his eyes and right lets his... Sleep, I say. And lets his head fall back on the table. Why are you sleeping here while others are out striking? Nate got it. Mazared's got it. He's guarding the gate. Or just getting some sleep. Or was. Who's behind the organizing the strike? We are. The workers. The union. We know what we need. What's right for us. You mean there's no leader? Huh, alright. I guess that makes sense somehow. <laughs> um, you mean there's no leader? No gay. No, I guess there's... Also, Evrar. Evrar. He's in charge of the union. He's smart. Knows how to negotiate. He's got our backs. <laughs> uh, what about the dead body in the yard? Yeah. What about it? Seem cool with it. Do you have any many? Do you have many of those hanging from trees here? I'm just trying to figure out what you know about it. You know, people die here every day. Someone's found in a ditch. Another one falls in a mano. A third one gets eaten by stray dogs. If someone has decided to die on top of a tree, then who is it my concern? Someone has to look into it. Looks like I'm that someone. Tell me what you know. Well, little point asking you about the body, then. I got other questions now. Tell me what you know. I can tell you this. Trouble's ahead. What trouble? You heard what I said. Draw your own conclusions. That's all I know. And I prefer to keep it this way. Is he saying there's going to be more? Lieutenant gives the you a little nod. Oh. gives you a little nod. Then makes a note in his blue notebook. Okay. So Union people think he was a killer. He thinks. Even sleepy hair. This doesn't help a lot. But it's something. Good work, detective. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Yours, point at the bottle in the spill room. Indeed. Help yourself to some. Wait. No. Oh, it's empty. Sorry about that, pal. <laughs> Is there anything interesting in your dreams? Thank God, no. Was it the fam fathomless... Uh, what? Was it a fathomless darkness into which we ought to be deferred like corpses to a mausoleum? Was it pure nothing, your consciousness no larger than a single grain of malt? Tell me, was it bliss free of X somethings? You're right, let's talk about something else. Was it bliss free of X somethings? The worker stares at you, his eyes dry from sleep. <laughs> a web of wrinkles covers his tanned forehead. Yeah, it didn't make much sense, did it? I don't know what you're talking about, kind sir. But when I'm out, then I'm really out. No X anything. Just quality time. A little me time in the abyssal pelagic zone. You can never return to it now. Only detective work remains. Wakefulness and detection. All right, I'll let you sleep. The dock worker doesn't answer. His head is already back down on the table in sweet sleep. Good point. All right. Well... Is there anything else to do in here? Don't know. Was I here before? Okay. <laughs> Hi. Did I already talk to you? I did already talk to you. Hello again, sweetie. Sweetie needs money. Do sweeties get money? <laughs> um, I don't want to bother her. Don't think we can go in here, can we? Whoa. No. Okay. Let's talk to you, good sir. Can I help you? <laughs> okay. There's a trash container out back yours. So, about that money I owe. 
I need a drink. Can you pour me one? I've seen something here at the Whirling Guard. I th think I need to talk about. By the way, I'm going to sing karaoke here. Oh no. There's a trash container out back yours. Mine? No, it belongs to the Whirling in Rags. Well, that's what I meant. Thank you for clearing that up. Why do you keep the container locked? <laughs> why? To keep the hobos and drunks out. That's why. And the neighbors too. They put their trash there and they don't pay for the garbage company. How rude. I thought as much. And are you the only party with access to the trash container? Well, yes. Us and the garbage disposal company. Hmm. It seems a little callous, doesn't it? Something stirs in you. I wonder what this feeling is. No, it doesn't. Nothing stirs in me and it isn't callous. It's common sense. Uh, I wonder what this feeling is. Prod at him and find out. Doesn't it seem callous to you, guarding even your leftovers from the poor? We need those keys. What do you need them for? It concerns the keys. Please cooperate. The lieutenant's voice is harsh and sudden. Just bring them back once you're done, please. Yay! <laughs> okay, um... By the way, I'm gonna sing karaoke here. Absolutely out of the question. No. Uh, you wait and see, cafeteria man. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely in the question. First we find a sad banner. Then we sing this place to shit. <laughs> Damn straight. Uh, so about that money I owe. Yes, have you got it? Actually, let's talk about like something else. What? I was really enjoying talking about <laughs> the money you owe me. Okay, bye. <laughs> let's beat it, Kim. This guy's on to us. <laughs> Damn, this song slaps. I am so uncomfortable. I'm sorry I'm shifting around so much, guys, but I am so uncomfortable today. Okay, let's open that container, and then I think we'll end the episode there. All right. <sighs> this trash container is locked. The sliding lid has a padlock that says, whirling in rags. Open the padlock with the key. With a well-oiled crack, the lock pops open. It should now be possible to simply raise the lid. Don't. Maybe you shouldn't. Didn't I just have a premonition that there's something in there? From the lid. Another time, maybe. Oh, uh... There is. But you won't like it. Sweat forms on your brow. Your hand is still on the lid. Open the lid. The smell of rotten food rises to greet you. You see soggy cartons, dirty rags, and organic waste. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> We're just in time. This hasn't been emptied for over a week. Look at the boxes of cartons. You see milk and egg rest with one broken egg in it. Some pasta wrapper. Picking up the soggy packages somehow feels familiar. Archer is going insane right now. You've done this before. The movements are recorded in your elbows. The methodology in your fingers. You're used to this. Used to what? Dumpster diving? No. Searching for evidence in the trash. <sighs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Dive further. A box falls into pieces in your hands. A tea sole cereal. There are plastic pasta packages below. And turbo noodles. Nothing of note, however. Um, pick at the rats. Among the threadbare kitchen towels, something catches your eye. A pair of denim trousers. Grab them. As the legs of the slime-covered jeans begin to Ugh. unspool from the garbage, a rank corpse smell fills the air. The victim's clothes? Cadaverine odor is faint. If these belong to the deceased, they were removed when he was still in the early stages of decay. But why would you remove them just to throw them in the dumpster Drop right next to them? Here, officer. Huh. Lieutenant produces a black plastic bag marked evidence from his pocket, dropped them oh, bag off. Guitar trousers. marked blue jeans. Pockets. Empty. Or emptied. He wore them with a belt, too. A white belt. The loops appear stretched, but the belt is missing. That's it. Do you see anything else in there? I have another bag here. Something slimy catches your eye. 
Reach for it or nope. <laughs> Reach for it. A drab long sleeved shirt, olive colored, appears from the food waste, dripping with pus. What if I was the killer? Wouldn't that be a twist? This is a military type overgarment. No label or serial number. This is the kind of rib knit shirt that's worn over light armor to conceal it in an urban scenario. Hmm. Anything more? The rest of the rags are just kitchen variety waste. A yellow old mug that catches your eye. But other than that... A thrown out towel, a mug, that's all. All right. We should go to Gart again and ask if he knows who put the clothes in the trash. It could be as simple as someone from the hostel cleaning the yard. Or that one. <laughs> I'd advise against confronting that force. Yeah, we need to ask the kids who put them here. You think someone from the Whirling Rag might have been involved, maybe? Or okay? Uh... Not really. All we know is the victim's clothes are in the trash, the lid was locked, and this establishment had the key. It's just a small loose hmm. thread. You need to ask the kids who put them there. The fuck's he on about, kids? You hear that, Kuno? He thinks you're an infant or something. You basically are. See? <laughs> okay. The lieutenant nods and looks back into the trash container. Uh, Search of food waste. It's just organic waste. Cold and slimy on your hands. Apple and potato pills, mostly. Unidentified sludge and the occasional chicken bone thrown in for good measure. But hey, nothing. It's nothing. Nothing more to see here. What's this? What? Elbows out, there's nothing more here. What? A blue piece of plastic sticks out from the apple peels. It's shiny. Looks like the corner of something. Pick it up. They look badly damaged, but you can still make out forms and notes. Written in a man's handwriting. Officer, is that your paperwork? Uh, no, it can't be. I don't know what this is. Uh... I don't know what this is. It is. Look. The plastic has the RCM street grid on it. You've even got an autopsy form in there. Miserable looking slip of paper sticks to the board. How did it get here? If you don't mind my asking, how could you have let your paperwork end up in the trash? It must have been cramping my style. It has a foreboding quality to it. Maybe I need to lose it for the great bloodletting to begin. I think I didn't want to be a cop anymore. That's why I tried to flush my cop life down the toilet. I'd rather not talk about it right now. I think I didn't want to be a cop anymore. Well. He doesn't know what to say. His eyes express a rare condolence. Then he picks it up. Lucky we found it. You should take stock of what remains. Just to be sure some has not made it into the hands of the RCM's adversaries. Organized crime and the like. There might have been police secrets in your notes. Okay, I'll do that. Say nothing. I don't know, man. Sounds like an order. I don't take those. <laughs> okay, I'll do that. It would also not hurt to start taking notes on the case. Now, tell me what your eagle eyes see. Or are we finished? The mug. I'm getting that mug, too. You pick out a broken <laughs> mug with an oddly racist depiction of the yellow man frolicking in saffron. Uh, an antique? Only in its social sensibility. Take the mug. Mm -hmm. Lieutenant briefly glances at the mug, then returns to his sight to the trash. Close the lid. The container sounds a muffled gong. <laughs> That's one thing off the list. I think Lieutenant. we got it all. Oh. Okay. I think we're good. I believe so. Okay, I'm going to leave this episode off here. I don't know how much we really got done. It seemed like we got a good bit of work done examining the body, which is one of the main goals I had for this video, was to actually take a look at the body. Seems like there's a lot more going on um, than we think. It appears to be a lynching, but it definitely seems like there's more to it. He has this um, very expensive ar armor, and all those pieces are missing. Those two kids were fucking annoying and I cannot stand them and I really hope I don't have to talk to them very much longer. I'm just saying maybe later on we'll get to know them and be like hey they just have a messed up life which they probably do to be fair. Um, so you know what I'll hold my tongue I'll give them a second chance if we can talk to them and get them to open up a little bit but I don't really know. I really enjoy Kim as a character and my character and how they work together and it's just really cool. I really like the partnership going on here. It's just a lot of fun. 
I, I think there's a lot of potential for them to be good pals. Anyways, though, I'm really happy to continue this series. I'm glad you guys are enjoying it so far. Um, let me know what you thought of this episode and how many side quests I should get to because I don't I don't know how many I should get to, honestly. Um, there There's a lot going on and I don't know which ones matter, which ones don't. I'm going to try to see what I can do, uh, but who knows. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, leave a like or subscribe if you're new because I'd really love to have you stick around and watch me play some video games and join me for some more episodes of this game because it's a lot of fun. Anyways guys, I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye.